Hello, world! What is up? Welcome to Build. Thank you for that. Welcome to Build. Uh, I'm your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Man, I'm pretty excited to talk to our next guest. Now, you've seen her on shows like Vampire Diaries and Unreal, or maybe you're one of the half a million people out there that follow her on Instagram. Uh, either way, you can currently catch her as Crystal in all her badass glory and dynasty on the CW. That's right, the always awesome Natalie Kelly is here. How about that, folks? That's pretty amazing, right? That's exciting. We're going to bring her out in a second. With only a few episodes left in the first season and a major character entering the fold, we've got a lot to discuss. But before we do, uh, we're going to take a quick look at a clip from an upcoming episode. So, Luke, let's go ahead and run that clip, man. You all right? Will you stop asking me that? I'm fine. If anything, it's Anders that needs to see a shrink. I understand that he had an attachment to my father. I've known the man since I was born. I mean, he taught me how to shave, and that's why I let it slide. But I do not need an employee or a ghost telling me what to do. You're right. Your father was a miserable man. I certainly never heard a kind word from him. As far as I'm concerned, he doesn't deserve another moment of your life. Well, thank you. But you can't move on. And nothing can move forward if you don't go to Savannah. The longer you fight him, the longer you let him loom over you. But the sooner you get this over with, the sooner you can be free. All right, everybody make some noise. Natalie Kelly right here, huh? Fantastic. Ah, this show. Uh, well, first of all, thank you so much for being here, and welcome to Build. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's so great to have you here. Uh, huge fan of this show. Well, tons to talk about. We're going to get into that, but before we do anything, it's always important for me to start. Just first and foremost, how are you? How's Natalie doing? I'm doing so good. I landed this morning at 9 a.m. I was up at 5, but I'm good. I'm ready to go. That's not bad. So how's New York so far? <laughs> um, the last five hours have been riveting. Um, I I'm pr we're lucky in that we film in Atlanta where the show is, is, is set, so we're pretty close to New York, so we yeah. can pop over. Not too bad at all. Well, congratulations. Uh, we got a couple episodes left in the first season, season two. Have you guys finished filming season two? Have you started season two? Where are we at on the season two process? <laughs> we don't know about season two, so everyone's got to tune into season one. <laughs> oh, I thought I had read somewhere that they picked it up for Well, uh, everyone's still waiting to know. But we're, we're still waiting. Hopeful. Okay, um, fair enough. Yeah, the fans have been really loyal and amazing and it's, we're just seeing it continue to build. But we're wrapping up season one now. We're actually filming the finale episode. No way. Yeah. So what's that like? Is that uh, a lot of jaws dropping, a lot of heads turning? Are you guys all... Well, actually, <laughs> we didn't get the script for the finale until, like, minutes before the table read. So we were all reading it cold on the day at the table, and there was, like, audible, like, <gasps> gasps, and like, what? Wait, no! Which, which means that it's, you know, it's doing something right if it's getting those kind of reactions. Well, so. that's so exciting that that happens even to, to you guys as you're creating. Yeah, Because that's what's is. happening at home while we're watching. Totally, yeah. and I'm getting to experience it as the audience. Like, yeah. the, the definite crazy cliffhangers and plot twists that come up in the finale. And of course, Alexis has been fully revealed by then, which is another really exciting element. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, something that I thought was really interesting about the show and I was looking up is that you just recently moved to Fridays at 8, mm -hmm. which is cool. But I don't know if a lot of people in the States realize this, but as soon as it's aired here, it, it's on Netflix globally, right? So you have this worldwide audience. Yeah, that's been really nice is yeah. feeling the reactions from people around the world. It's becoming really popular in Brazil and Australia. And um, that's nice when you feel like you've, yeah. you're making something that people are responding to. Um, but yeah, it is available the next day on Netflix, so. And that's, I imagine that's been different than probably some of the projects you worked on in the past, where they sort of, it happens in waves, right? Where they yeah, it happens in waves. This way my mom can see what I'm doing the very next day. She doesn't, back in the olden days, yeah. she'll have to order her the DVD set, <laughs> like three months later. The right but now and all the that next stuff. day she's like, wait, so what is happening? What is Colby going to do? Who is Fallon going to choose? So I get, it's, we get to, you know, communicate about my work in real time, which is so nice. I love that your mom's coming to you for spoilers. Yeah. That's funny. Does yeah. she at least ask how you're doing before she gets to that? What's funny is she's like, don't tell me. I don't want to know. I don't know. But just, so, just tell me one thing. Like, she <laughs> pretends that she doesn't want the spoiler, but she does. That's pretty funny. I mean, that's kind of everybody, right? That's how it is. None of us want spoilers, but we all kind of want to ask yeah, the question anyway. Yeah, 
just give me a little information. Welcome to every interview you've had to do for this show, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can't tell me anything, but I want to know everything. Let's go. <laughs> uh, well, it, it makes sense, too, I think, that sort of distribution to, to, to release it globally because this show, uh, the, the cast is incredible, and there's uh, an incredible diversity amongst the cast that isn't just like there's purpose. It's about their characters as well, right? You know, uh, like Colby is Nigerian, but he's not just, you know, there's a reason. That's part of his story. Uh, you know, Crystal is Venezuelan, and that, that journey, we just had a great moment between Crystal and Sammy Joe talking about being immigrants and all this sort of stuff. So it, it's great that it's released globally so it can resonate with everyone at the same time. Was that part of what drew you to this show? Was that sensibility? Um, look, when I first signed on, there wasn't even a script. Nope. But I, I tr totally trusted in Josh and Stephanie and Sally's vision. Josh and Stephanie, of course, did Gossip Girl. And right. so I knew if they were going to make a show that was... Um, going to be relevant, that it would have to be global. I mean, casting me as Crystal was, you know, step number one. Like, making Crystal Latina, she was obviously played by Linda Evans in the original, and she's such a beautiful, iconic American woman. And so that was a big chance that they took, and I think that really set the precedent for what they were going to do with the rest of the show. Now, I was written as Latina, not nothing specific. Yeah. Then when Rafael de la Fuente came on, who plays Sammy Joe, and he was Venezuelan, well, of course, there's a lot of there are a lot of things going on there right now. It's a country that's experiencing a lot of instability and it's good to draw attention to what's happening there because a lot of us don't know and it's our, it's our neighbor. And we were like, this is a great opportunity to educate Americans and the world on what's happening there. And so we've been able to weave that into the storyline, which is one of my, the, like, the things I'm happiest about on the show is being inclusive. And then N Sam, he was cast, um, initially wasn't Nigerian, but then they decided to work that into the storyline too. And I just love that it speaks to people. Yeah. It makes me so happy when people um, comment like, wow, I heard oh, I w I either Igbo or w what, which Nigerian is he? There's two. There's, oh, God. I've got, if I got it wrong. There's got to be, be somebody in the room or on Sam, the internet. Sam, I know your tribe, I swear. I'm just forgetting it right now. <laughs> but they're so excited to hear it yeah. on, on TV. I think that's really exciting. I don't think 10 years ago you would have heard you know, a Nigerian dialect been spoken on the CW. No, and that's kind of the brilliance of this sort of reimagining of the original show is the, the original show uh, was very much a product of its time and a lot of the characters are, uh, they didn't age well, so to, you know, is one way to put it, some of those characters. What do you way, mean? Well, I mean, like, the, the original Blake was a, was a... Was well, I a mean, lot they don't, today, they wouldn't, yeah, not time's up. On, exactly, oh, exactly, oh, precisely. No, that's because I mean. some of the things they say are like... A little homophobic no, and quite, racist. Quite and a like, bit, exactly. It's not the time for that. Precisely. Yeah, yeah, yeah time no, is up on all that. Very well. All the actors look amazing. They've <laughs> aged well. But I mean, the, some the of the concepts are dated. Precisely. Like in the original, precisely. Blake shuts the door, his office door on Crystal in one scene because he has to take a meeting with his business partners or men yeah. and it's so symbolic like the woman literally being shut out and she's yeah. like oh I guess I'll go pick out China now and I just love that in this modern reimagining both myself and Fallon are working women and that we're not fighting over a man per se but the company and I think that's really reflective of how far we've come. Liz was here I think when the show came out and she had a great line where it's like the fights still happen but they're not over shoes they're about power because these are women in boardrooms these are yeah, women yeah, that yeah. have commanding presence and I thought that was a great line I thought that described it uh, uh, very very well and, yeah. and very very much encapsulated a lot of the fun. Uh, so let's talk a little bit, let's get deeper into Crystal. Uh, since uh, you brought so much to the role, uh, talk about developing Crystal as you got involved and as you've worked over the season, because I feel like the show's always been great, but there's something about we like- We found our stride. Yes, there's something- Definitely <laughs> found our stride. Look, it's a difficult thing, like to nail the tone of a show as well. You're trying to be serious, because you can't, it can't be totally unbelievable. Um, but at the same time, there's an element of camp that you have to deliver. And Liz Gillies nails it so perfectly, and she did from the get-go. Um, and I think with Crystal, I've just been really feeling out like how much I can push like her humor or her personality within within her character because she is different to Liz. She is the more mature one, which yeah. does not feel as fun to play sometimes in the table reads when she, you know, listening to all her lines, she gets the most amazing lines, but, but she, she's amazing. And like, she is Fallon, like no one else could do Fallon like her. Um, and sometimes I'm stuck with the more mature dialogue, you know? But, but I, I love who Crystal has shown herself to be as the series has progressed, which is, 
Um, she's shown herself to have a lot of moral character, to be really loyal to those people she loves, even when they don't love her back. I love in the last couple of episodes how she stepped up to step Fal to help Fallon, even while Fallon is resisting, yeah. that she's that much of a woman's woman, that she would be able to see through her immaturity and her pettiness sometimes to the, to the golden person that Fallon really is deep down. Big fan of Team Fistel. Big <laughs> that we came up with that one yeah, night yeah. after a couple of glasses of that red wine. I was like, what about Fistel? <laughs> I thought that was fantastic, yeah. you guys. Put the vote up. Clear winner. <laughs> that's what it was out of the Actually, gate. Actually, it was a close call. I don't know what other people were thinking. I, it was, yeah, all right, that's polite to say it was close. <laughs> I think we all knew from the beginning which name was going to come out on top of that argument. But I've been gagging for us to team up from the very beginning. I'm like, can we just be friends? They're like, no, people want to see you guys fight. I'm like, wow. <laughs> Well, there's um, there's something that you uh, you touched on that I think is really great about Crystal. Uh, so as I said, I watched a show with my wife, and she was telling me this amazing story that recently uh, Reese Witherspoon was out doing press for Wrinkle in Time, right? And one of the reporters had given her her thesis paper because she wrote about Legally Blonde, about how that was the first character she remembers who was really smart and powerful, but also feminine. And like it was it was okay for you to be all of those things. And it reminded us a lot of Crystal, who is very much that character. She's very powerful. She's very very smart, she's very loyal, but she she's still very has like a feminine edge to her, which I think sets her apart from a lot of some of the vibes on the show. How much of that was on the page? How much of that did you find and bring with you to the role? I love that you recognize that about Crystal, because that's something that I always like to come back to, the fact that you can be feminine and strong. You can be powerful and strong, but feminine at the same time. Some people think those things are really opposed. And feminine is also fierce. You know, and uh, her ferocity comes out if you cross her or her family. Um, look, Linda Evans was such an angel, yet she had this really, like, strong resilience underneath everything. And I, there was a lot of, like, paying homage to her. Like, I wanted to keep, I wanted to keep her f very feminine, but I wanted to also show... Um, I wanted to show her fierceness and how, like, in Crystal you see how much women have, how far they've come since the days of the original dynasty. Like, on it, like, about her work, driven, ambitious, and that those things aren't, um, y those things can be synonymous with femininity. Uh, a lot of that, too, comes from the ridiculously awesome costume work on this show and the fashion design and the wardrobe and all that. And... Uh, I was just wondering what that experience is like. You know, you talk about the gasps at the table reads. Are there gasps when you get to see some of the outfits they're putting on? What's oh, yeah. the thought process and behind the And a little bit outfits? of rivalry. Sometimes I oh, walk no. in and I was like, who's this for? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Yeah. I thought pink was my color, but okay. <laughs> no, we're, we're, we're only allowed, so my character can't wear black or red, season one. Well, we're establishing her and Meredith, our costume designer, uh, Meredith Markwick, Pollack. She is an amazing costume designer, does an incredible job on the show. She is creating characters and telling stories with these pieces of clothing that we're wearing. And so with Crystal, we wanted to establish her as like more feminine and softer. So she's in a lot of pinks and blushes and cashmere. She rocks a pink suit like nobody else. And then Fallon gets like the reds and the blacks and the golds. And um, and we pretty much have to kind of stick to that while we're establishing who we are. Maybe season two, Crystal will get to wear a black dress, that is my dream. <laughs> that's your, I love it, that's your dream. Yeah. Has, has working uh, with someone like Meredith and with that sort of attention to detail, has that influenced sort of you outside of this job and like the way you look at Of course, at, at now my taste is so ridiculously expensive. I'm like, <laughs> I, yeah, I've been spoiled now. No, it's been, it's been amazing because, um, you know, you, you get to, you're fans of designers and I'm, yeah. I'm a, you know, I, I like aesthetic and I like clothes, so, there are definitely designers that I had admired from afar but had never gotten the chance to, to wear. And so this is like a fairy tale. You know, going into our fittings is like literally like pretty woman every week. Is there, is there a, a, outside of the black dress, is there a dream designer that you'd love to have? Well, Crystal wears a lot of Tom Ford. Yeah. So if Tom Ford want to, you know, step up and do something with me. I believe Tom watches the show. <laughs> so uh, if you just want it, Tom. Because Liz we... has claimed Gucci. So I'm Actually, like, yeah, she's claimed Gucci. She wears a lot of Gucci. She rocks it really well. Do you guys ever take anything with you? Do you ever accidentally, oh, I wore it home. No, no, oh, <laughs> no um, Meredith's very, very kind to dress us for events and stuff. But no, those, those clothes are the property of the CW, everybody. <laughs> 
Well, final thing about fashion, shout out to Colby's blazer game because those are some amazing blazers. That has an amazing wardrobe. And he's such a stylish man. Like, he's so stylish in person. He's such a great character. Sam Adagoki is, like, a fine young man, a fine-looking young man. A fine-looking young man. That's a very mature thing for you to say. Crystal's (laughs) coming through right now. He's a very fine-looking young man. Uh, Speaking of great characters, and and correct me if I'm wrong, but is tonight's episode, do we get to, is Alexis back tonight? So Alexis appears at the end of tonight's episode, which is really exciting. exciting. We've been all waiting to see what kind of trouble she'll bring, and she brings lots of it. I can only imagine. What has that been like? We we talk about the show, you know, hitting its stride, and everybody sort of getting into a rhythm and finding their characters, and now you take this character in in just like a hurricane, just throw it in there and and mix up all these dynamics and relationships. What's it it been like? Well, it's perfect because it's kind of reflecting what's going on in real life, you know? We've all done like 16 episodes together by the time she comes on the show. So we're all in a little bit of a rhythm and we feel like a family. And all of a sudden this newcomer comes blazing in. And Nicolette Sheridan is a personality. Like her, her personality is, is, is amazing and intense. And she is like a hurricane in the best possible way. I mean, she's just a burst of like amazing energy. So it felt like a shake up in a good way on and off the screen. Does it ever, when someone is that lovely and brings that kind of energy, does it make it more difficult to have confrontations with them on camera and in a scene? Or does it actually make it easier when they're that kind of lovely? I, 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 did, a, I did a stunt rehearsal. I'm not giving too much away with That's her last it. night. And just imagining doing all this with her. And the inside, I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, because she's so good. Yeah. And I'm seeing it how the audience is going to see it. And it's... They're gonna. That gets you they're gonna excited. love it. Yeah. Yes. I mean, she's really like the perfect, perfect Alexis. She's bringing just the right, like just the right amount of camp and like humor, and she's really good. It's pretty exciting. What, uh, what kind of? If you can answer this without revealing, and if not, we'll, we'll move on. But can you tell us anything about uh, the impact this is gonna have on you know Team Fistel on uh, the relationship with Blake? Like, it's gonna change everything. Well, Fallon is not the biggest fan of her mom. So that's kind of the biggest confrontation you'll see at first, which I like that they don't jump into the obvious like new wife, ex-wife drama right off the bat because the kind of crystal woman is, she's not, she's gonna give the woman a chance. You know, she hasn't done anything wrong to her personally. Um, But as the episodes progress, you start to realize just like how, um, how bad of a mother uh, Stephen and Fallon think she is. You know, I, I think Alexis would think differently, um, which is also very interesting. She has her own point of view. She doesn't think she's been a bad mother. Well, that's the thing I love about the show is that everybody, there's a whole reasoning behind the action, no matter how bad or heinous an act it is. You, you always find out about it. You go, I can't believe he did that. And then you like hear the story. Oh, well, that's why he did that. I guess I can kind of, like, you, you can always understand. You get everybody's motivation. You, you get to learn about them. So it, everybody has their own perspective and their own journey it's that they're on. Even, even Jeff Colby, who, you know, is technically a villain, like, you understand why, you know? Yeah, he's definitely a villain. And I just, but you still, in that moment. Good looking villain. It's a good looking villain. There's no, objectively handsome dude. He's a fine young man, that one. But but you couldn't help, even as a villain, you just feel like, oh, man, you lost so hard. Like, when his plan collapsed so bad, you were like, dude, you were so close, but not close at all. Like, she had you from the beginning. She knew what she was doing. You still feel in that moment for the villain. Yeah, Pretty which amazing. is smart writing. You mentioned, speaking about the writing, we're going to go to audience in a little bit, uh, but I, I'm made of questions here. When you, uh, when you mentioned earlier you were happy to see the direction they were going, uh, that they didn't do the obvious thing when Alexis shows up, has there been a moment, not where they've done something obvious, but where you've gotten to know Crystal as you've you know, sort of forged her th- from story to story, did they ever make a decision or do something where you were like, oh, I don't know if Crystal would do that, something like that? Has there ever been like a moment where you've, do you know one of it? Oh, is it coming up? I had a hard time with kissing the reporter, Rick. I was going to ask. Thank you. All right, good. I'm glad you said that. I had a hard time with it. And I understand why it had to happen, but Natalie had a hard time with it. Yeah. But... I'm going to show you the cards after. She just had to do what she had to do. That was the, that was the example I noted yeah. in my cards. I know people had a tough time because they were like, oh, we just started to trust you and let you in, and then why this? It was my mom was there on set that day. <laughs> I was like, not that there's... I mean, he's... That, look... 
J.A.R. is a very nice man and he's a great actor. It's not, it, just like character and story-wise, I just, it felt a little funny because I'm so invested in this character and I feel like Blake and I had just gotten over this hump. But, you know, there are gonna, there are gonna be things that come out about Blake that are gonna make you not like him. So we're gonna be even, okay? <laughs> is, is there, do you think there, for Crystal, is there ever, a, is there a line, is there a point? Because there's a great moment with the breakfast in bed scene where he's like, oh, I don't like sweets. And she's like, what don't I know about you? And it's like, red flag, red flag. And I'm wondering, is, is there a point where, where there's too much, where, where Crystal, do you think, is just had enough? Or, or is it more in Crystal's character to keep navigating this and, and finding a well, way to Well, that's what we're going to find out. Is she going to stay and navigate it, or is she going to be fed up? And it, yeah, and the, these final episodes are really exciting, too, because like the stuff that comes out, it's just so smart what they've done with the show, like the, the turns that the characters have taken. In the beginning, you would not have expected Blake to have so many yeah. demons, you know? And, they, and, and, and you see Crystal as the villain in the beginning. Like you assume that she's the gold digger and she has bad motives. And by the end of the season, they kind of turn it on its head and it's really smart. It's pretty, it, like I said, it, it, it's a fantastic show. Uh, I love yeah. watching it and following along. We love gasping at home and being surprised and shocked at every turn. We're really looking forward to the next couple episodes. This next one is a doozy. This is it? Tonight, Friday. Uh, tonight. Tonight. Today's yeah, Friday. Today's Friday, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tune in tonight. Totally it is. It's Friday. Tonight, 8 p.m. on The CW, and then tomorrow all over the world on Netflix. Uh, all right, we're going to open up the audience Q&A. We've got some microphones in the room. The first one is coming from, looks like back here. Yeah. Hello. Um... So my question is, there are so many huge fans of the old dynasty. So have you faced any backlash of uh, redoing the dynasty and any, anyone out there? And, yeah, and how do you question. deal? And how do you deal with it? I think in the beginning... Because my roommate is a huge old dynasty yeah, fan, so... I know, he doesn't like our version. He won't, like he won't even watch the new <laughs> Look, one. Look, I totally get it. You know, every time they drop news of a new remake, you know, I'm like, oh, do we need to do that one? I didn't have any investment towards this one because I was actually too young to catch the original. Um, but obviously there was a lot of nerves and and like hesitation and about doing something that is so iconic, um, especially the roles of like Linda and, and Joan, like they killed those roles. Um, so of course, we were all nervous. We all didn't want to mess up this classic, amazing material. But as soon as it came out and people got what it was, that it wasn't like we're not, re it's a reboot. Like it's set now, we're not, we're lifting things that are still relevant, but we're not touching how good the original is. I've been really, really surprised and impressed with A, the new fans, and the old OG fans coming back for this one. Like, honestly, it's, I've been surprised, because I expected a little more. Awesome. Thank you for that question. Next one is, looks like, right in front of you. How is the arrival of Alexis going to impact Crystal and Fallon's relationship? Well, we've just seen them start to team up, you know, where she helped her, she told her she'd call off the wedding if that's what she wanted, and she walked her down the aisle, what a moment. Um, so there, there's definitely a, a truce, if not a small budding friendship between them. Liz would be like, you've gone too far, there's no friendship. <laughs> um, but uh, she shakes everything up because She's really the reason, when Alexis comes back, you realize why Fallon is the way she is and so emotionally unavailable and closed off because she's carrying a lot of trauma from, from you know, those years with her mother. And so Alexis comes back and she stirs up that pot. And actually it inspires a lot of maternal instincts in Crystal to protect Fallon. So I think those are going to be some sweet moments to watch and juicy. For sure. Uh, and you didn't spoil anything. Right? You're <laughs> pretty good job. You're Right. Should do this professionally. <laughs> all right, we've got time for uh, looks like one more question. It's coming from all the way in the back. Hi. Um, so I was just wondering, did you ever imagine yourself being able to do a show like this after doing like um, like many other projects? Like you started off in Tokyo Drift. You mean starting off thirteen Unreal. years ago and yeah. then like coming back? Yeah. yeah. You know what? No, I actually didn't think I was going to be an actress. I lucked out on this like crazy audition when I was. 19 years old and brought me here and then three months later I booked Fast and Furious. It all happened for me really fast. And, and I, Yeah, Fast and Furiously. Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't expect any of it to happen and to be honest, when that happened for me so young, I wasn't really prepared and I didn't know if it was what I really wanted to do and so there's like a, a lot of years in there that I actually just took off and I just traveled and I figured it out and then I came back to it in my mid to late 20s and was like, you know what? 
I did really want to do this, but I, I wasn't going to know that until now. I needed to go and, like, figure it out. And so I came back, and I started again from scratch, and it is a miracle right now. <laughs> like, it doesn't happen for a lot of people that they get, like, in a way, a second chance like this. But, um, yeah, I'm so grateful, like, pinching myself that I get to be part of such an iconic project. Do you rem uh, thank you for your question, by the way. We're going to wrap it up in just a second. But I'm curious, because the Tokyo Drift thing, it is, it is sort of this anomaly when you look at your IMDb and sort of the stuff that you've done and all that. And I wonder, like, one, how do you look back on that? It, what was your experience like in terms of do you remember the moment that you were like, I, I want this, but I'm not sure I'm ready for this sort of thing? You know, what do you, yeah. what do you think about when you think about that time? Well, I remember asking my boyfriend at the time, like, do you think I should do it? Because I don't really watch those kind of movies. I'm not an action movie person. I shouldn't say that. But, you know. Um, and he's like, of course you should. Everyone's like, of course you should. And then it just turned out to be this, like, really special standalone experience of my life. We got to go to Japan. And, like, there's still so much love in Japan for the movie. And also to see, because it became kind of like the cult classic of all, the, of, of all of them. You know, it's definitely the outlier. And the people that like it and they respond to it are really cool. They're like the little cult. Yeah. Yeah. And I just love that like 13 years later, people still come up to me and ask me about it. It's really sweet. It means you've touched something in someone. Yeah. It's cool. It's definitely cool to but do yeah, something like so that. It's so different from it's me so now. It's like two different people. Yeah, night and day, but uh, part of the journey, no less. And, and very, very uh, excited that you could make some time to be Thank here again. You. Thank you so much for me. hanging out with Thank us, guys. guys. I'll say it one more time. Uh, tonight, 8 p.m., CW, Netflix thereafter. Make some noise for Natalie Kelly. Keep it going. Come on. Come on.